The main product we make at Bevco are conveyor systems. And in this video, I'm going to go over a bunch of the common parts for conveyors. Um, this one that we have set up is for a beer company. So we'll be running single file cans of beer along this line. It's kind of our most common type of and simplest type of conveyor that we build. So I'll just put a couple cans on the line so you can see what it looks like when they're running. So you have your conveyor frame, the chain running along the conveyor, which transports the containers. You have your guide rails, which keep the containers on the conveyor and guide rail brackets. These are adjustable. You just loosen off this uh, knob and you can move the guide rail brackets in or out, which depending on the can size that the company is running, you might need to move those brackets in or out because some companies run various sized containers. Uh, so obviously the width needs to change with the container. Um, this particular one has drain pans. So they're running lubrication on this line. So it'll be wet all over the place and you don't want that wet stuff falling all over the floor. So we have drain pans to catch uh, any liquid that comes off the conveyor and it drains to a drain point, which has a little nipple. Um, splice plates, so these are what we call splice plates. And they basically just connect the different conveyor sections together. Um, the most simple piece of conveyor is just a straight section. So right here, you have a straight section, the cup about two and a half feet long. Then you have curves. So this is a 90 degree curve. An idler end. So the chain is getting pulled in that direction. And we call this an idler end because the shaft is idling. It's not being driven by an electric motor. Um, so you got your bearing, bearing plate. Inside there, there's a sprocket which uh, the, sh the chain rotates around and then you got a bearing on the other side. This is an internal lubrication line so they'll hook up a tube here which will deliver a type of lubrication chemical um, and this there's a little nozzle on the inside of the conveyor that sprays lubrication onto the chain. Um, this is another example of a non-internal lubrication line so it'll spray the lubrication out of that nozzle. Um, I showed you the idler end. I'll show you a drive end now. So this motor is pulling the chain in this direction. So you'll have a set of sprockets here rotating on a drive shaft and that's what powers the, the chain to pull it towards the drive. So you got your drive. Um, this one has a variable frequency controller, so you can change the speed of the motor by adjusting the knob. Uh, you can turn it on and off. These little baskets are for electrical cables. We call them cable trays. Um, this particular conveyor has covers. So if there's empty cans with no lid on it, a lot of customers will want covers on it so that any dust doesn't actually fall into the can during the process of uh, canning their product. Mm -hmm. This is a laner. So the cans come in single file and this machine will cycle back and forth to put the cans into two different lanes. So on the out feed, it has two conveyors where it can go through. So basically you're coming from single file into two, two different lanes. And that arm will direct the containers into these different lanes. This is another piece of equipment that's pretty common. It's a rinse tunnel. So during the process of filling beer, there's a lot of like overflow and you don't want sticky cans going to your customers. So this is a rinse tunnel 
that has a series of nozzle, of nozzles that sprays water on the exterior of the can and washes the outside of it. So that's what it looks like on the inside. And along with rinse tunnels, um, you want to dry that can so that you don't have wet cans going into cardboard boxes because that's messy and all sorts of things. So this is a drying tunnel. Um, these air knives blow any particles of water off the can so that you have a dry can that goes into the next stage of packaging. This is what we call a transfer. So this piece of conveyor will transfer a can from one type of chain to another. So there'd be a piece of chain coming this way and it transfers sideways onto the next chain here. Other common components, uh, you got legs. So this is our conveyor leg. On the leg we have adjustable foot pads. Um, this is a control panel. So this one in particular is controlling the laner, but we have, we can build control panels to uh, control basically any of our products, conveyors, anything. These are just the electrical wires. This is a rail switch. So if cans are coming by, they'll hit this switch and it'll send a signal to the control panel. Here's our drive end. So you've got this drive connected to a shaft, which is connected to a sprocket and the sprocket rotates and pulls the chain. This is called a drive co cover and it's just so people can't put their hands in there and. Um, you obviously don't want to get your hand in there because it could easily cause injury. So these are a cover to prevent workers from putting their hands into the drive. This is called a dead plate. So the dead plates allow a container to transfer horizontally onto another piece of equipment. Um, we have various type of guide rails. This particular one is the most common. It's called one inch wide flat guide rail, but there's various sizes. You could go two and a quarter inch, inch and a quarter. Uh, there's a small one called modified guide rail. Some conveyors even have stainless steel guides. Tons of different options depending on the application. Um, and then on the underside of conveyor, we have what we call return rollers. So the chain sits on these rollers and they spin. Basically it holds up the chain on the underside of the conveyor. So those are our return rollers. So those are some various components of conveyors that are common in our business. Um, I hope this video gave you a quick intro to some equipment that we build and thanks.